Hey, everybody. This one is called Changing the Status of the Minor Estate or Not. That's the question, and that's something that everybody's going to have to decide on their own. I'm not going to tell them what to do. I'll tell them what I would do, but you each have to decide on your own what you want to do about this. But uh, one thing I can tell you is that I don't know how to change the status, if I wanted to. Anyways, so we're going to talk about this more. First of all, I'm not a liar. Well, I'm in a lawyer. No, I'm in a liar. I should never, you should never take my word for anything. You should always do your own research. I provided references to aid you in your research, but I don't know everything, and I'm open to any ideas. It's time to get unplugged, folks. There's four types of people you'll meet in your life. There's the people who try to wake up the slaves. There's the slave masters. There's the people who have no idea they're slaves. And there's the people who like being slaves. Which one are you? Do you really know for sure? Are you who you think you are? If you can see through the illusion, then you are the solution. If the people don't know their basic rights and freedoms, how can they know when or if their rights and freedoms are being infringed? And that's the biggest problem I see today, is people do not know who they are or what their rights are. Never forget, the men who started this country were marijuana-growing, whiskey-drinking, tax-evading rebels who left their beds at night to shoot at the cops. Think about it. It's exactly what they did. They went out and engaged the British. Talk about balls. All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. I don't trust the government. I don't trust the medical, pharmaceutical, industrial complex. I don't trust the military industrial complex. I don't trust the mainstream media. I don't trust the bankster criminal cabal that owns the government, owns the medical, pharmaceutical, industrial complex, owns the military industrial complex, and owns the mainstream media. And if you call me a conspiracy theorist, I don't trust you. Government's not reason, it's not eloquence, it is force. Like fire, it's a dangerous servant and a fearful master. So uh, this is found in the Code of Law for the District of Columbia, passed in 1901. The legal estate to be in the CESTK use. Um, use is short for usufruct, and it falls under uh, Roman law. That's found at 31 Stat 1432. And uh, this actually goes back before then. This is uh, Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, volume two, under the definition of Mort Main. This Tomlin's Law Dictionary is one of those hundred volumes of a uh, hundred law dictionaries that I have that I make available to people. Uh, but um, uh, it's interesting, the pages aren't numbered in there. And that's why I have it under the definition of Mort Main. <laughs> and Mort Main goes on for like four or five pages. <laughs> Anyways, yet still it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. That's the Roman cult, folks. For when they were driven out of all their former holds, they devised a new method of conveyance by which their lands were granted, not to themselves, but to nominal fiafis, to the use of the religious houses. Use stands for usufruct. Thus distinguishing between the possession and the usufruct, and receiving the actual profits, while the season of the land remained in the nominal fiafi, who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy, that's the Roman cult, folks, to be bound in conscience to account uh, to his sestike use, usufruct, for the rents and emoluments of the estate. That's taxes, folks. It is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of usufructs and trusts, the modern, the foundation of modern conveyancing. And so a usufruct is a type of a trust. Um, court, this is found in the Code of Federal Regulations, 31 Code of Federal Regulations, uh, 363.6, it's the definition section. Anyways, court means a court of law with jurisdiction over the parties and the subject matter, okay? And subject matter is extremely important, okay? Because they never have subject matter. And watch my video about challenging jurisdiction, okay? And so they never, 
They always deny due process. They always do. Anyways, entity means any owner of a treasury direct account that is not an individual. Entity is a sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, limited liability company, or professional limited liability company, trust, the estate of a decedent, or the estate of a living person, such as an incompetent or a minor, okay? And so that's very important. So then we'll go on. Individual means a natural person. A minor means an individual under the age of 18. The term minor is also used to refer to an individual who has attained the age of 18 years, but has not yet taken control of the securities contained in his or her minor account. Well, the securities in that account are like a birth certificate. Okay, that's a security. Um, and so therefore, anybody that's over the 18, age of 18 that has not taken control of the securities contained in his or her minor account. You know, quite frankly, I have no idea how to do it. They like to keep that stuff secret because they want to enslave everybody. And the people that even talk about it make it difficult and convoluted at best. Anyways, but the question that this video is trying to present is should you even bother? Okay. And the reason I say that is this is found in the Code of Federal Regulations, okay? The regulations are for property of the government, okay? Are you property of the government? Do you want to put yourself in a position of being property of the government? I don't know. Not me, I can say. you got to decide yourself. Anyways, um, there's a lot of people, I always talk about unproven theories. There's a lot of people running around peddling their unproven theories, and so you have to decide. I am not going to decide for you, and I'm not going to tell you what you should do. I know what I would do. I know what I am doing, okay? But again, everybody has to decide for themselves, and I'm not going to say whether it's right or wrong, okay? That's between you and God, quite frankly. Um, I I know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do it, quite frankly, but that's that's my opinion, and, and, and everybody has to decide for themselves whether it's right for you um, before God, okay? Because that's who, at the end of the day, who you have to stand and account to. And so my opinion is this is all satanic. This is all fraud and deception. And, and that's why I don't do it. But you have to decide. Um, anyways, um, one of the things they do, at least from what I've heard in these unproven theories, is you have to get the birth certificate authenticated. And um, what they do is is they, um, first of all, get an, an authentication with, uh, you know, and some people say that's a apostille, you know. Um, my understanding is that's an apostille, but now I'm hearing that it's something different. Well, you know, again, this is all part of the secret. This is all meant to be deceptive and lies. And that's all the more reason why I'm not even going to try and do it. But but if you do, okay, get an apostille. The ones that I've heard about were an apostille. An apostille, what it does is you go to the state secretary of state and, and you get an apostille, which is a where the Secretary of State certifies the notary on the birth certificate. That's all they do, okay? Because there is a notary on the birth certificate. And so they'll certify the notary. And then you send it to the U.S. Secretary of State, and they certify the, um, the Secretary of State, the State Secretary of State, and say this State Secretary of State was a true Secretary of State, and you have to tell them it's under the Hague Convention. You have to tell them you're taking it to a foreign country that's not on the Hague Convention, like Panama or Taiwan or something like that. Um, so anyways, the point being is that when they do that in the federal, and they certify the, the State Secretary of State, the part of that statement says that they don't recognize the underlying document. That's because it's a fraud. And so, so um, you know, again, it's all fraud and deception. You have to decide what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Quite frankly, I am uh, setting up the Secretary of the Treasury to sue uh, Janet Yellen in this case. And 
so we'll see how that goes. And because because that that minor that Roman cult Sestake trust has caused me a lot of injury, and and I'm gonna sue her and that thing, and you know we'll see what happens. But my attitude is is I want nothing in there. I mean, what does the scriptures say? The scriptures say, "Do not rely on the arm of flesh." I don't, I don't want anything in there. A lot of people think they're going to get all this, this huge amount of money and all this other stuff. It's fake money, first of all, and um, and and you're wanting to get something for nothing. You know, again, you have to decide. I'm not going to do it anyway. So let's keep moving. So it's all fraud and deception. It's the banksters, okay? That falls under private international law. There's a Hague Convention on private international law, and uh, and private international law comes from the Roman cult, folks. So you want to participate that? A lot of people try and justify it, rationalize it. You know, it's up to you. I'm not going to be your judge. You know, you have to decide what you're going to do, and you're going to have to account to God But at some point in time. Um uh, about what you did. And, um, you know, so I, I'm not going to be your judge either. I am not going to be that. And so you have to decide. Securities are fake money. A use you fruct is Roman law. My contact information is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email address is engineerwin at yahoo.com. My YouTube profile, Sovereign Living. My Facebook community page was deleted. I deleted it due to censorship on the part of Facebook. My private group on Facebook is being deleted. Quite frankly, I haven't been there for months, maybe years. I'm not interested in going there. Facebook is just a big NSA data collection uh, uh, agency trying to collect your information. That's none of their damn business. And so I want nothing to do with it. I, In order to delete that group, uh, because Facebook will profit from it. And technically, the, the, the only way I could delete that group is to ban everybody off of it. It's got 17,000 people on there, last I looked. Who knows what it is now? And so um, I have to ban everybody off of that group and, and then delete the group. Otherwise, Facebook will continue to profit from it. They make money off of that stuff. Anyways, so, you know, don't get me going. Anyway, so I've got a, a private group on freelist.org, and I got a private group on Google. They're both called Administrating Your Public Servants. These are email groups where uh, people share information on, you know, ways of doing things. Follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. HowTube is my subscription uh, video uh, pro website. Um, they handle the billing, okay? I do not do any kind of billing there. I cannot add anybody there. You're going to have to add it yourself and you're going to have to arrange billing with how to. And so credit card, however they do it. And I cannot add anybody. Um, and then there's Rumble. I have a profile on Rumble and Rumble is busy. You know, I mean, the videos I upload, I, they always fail. And so I do live streams there sometimes, but you know, I'm just having a lot of trouble with Rumble. So, um, you know, I haven't really put much up on Rumble. I also have a true social uh, profile called Engineer Win at Engineer Win. And I've also got a true social group called Sovereignty International. And I went and contacted Twitter and, um, and they reinstated my profile, Engineer Win, on Twitter. It's X now. And so I'm on Twitter. And so um, um, you can you can go there and and uh, and uh, and contact me. Anyways, civil law, Roman law, Roman civil law, are convertible phrases meaning the same system of jurisprudence. That rule of action which every particular nation, commonwealth, or city has pecu established peculiarly for itself, more properly called municipal law, to distinguish it from the law of nature and from uh, international law. So this is all. That's what you are exposed to in D.C., okay? The District of Columbia, it's Roman law, and it's all commerce, okay? This is all commerce, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, okay? So if you want to participate in that, you're in commerce, and it's a dictatorship in commerce. Um, 
If you try to take control of any securities, you're submitting yourself to regulations, okay? That's a contract, okay? If you're subject to regulations, you are property of the government. A slave is property. You're volunteering yourself for slavery. So it's up to you. You know, you have to decide. I think it's going to bite you in the backside big time. But I have no idea. I don't know how to do it, but I'm not even interested in trying to find out. Uh, I'm going to set up Janet Yellen for a lawsuit and that Roman cult Sestake Trust. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. That's all I can say. Um, this is uh, Section 3 of the Government Corporation Operation Act of Canada. Every corporation for all its purposes is an agency of Her Majesty and Right of Canada. Actually, it's the bitch. Well, it's actually now the son of a bitch. <laughs> so I guess it's His Highness and Right of Canada. Um, the son of a bitch. <laughs> Section 2, definitions in this act owned means subject to the regulations. That's the Canadian Ownership and De Control Determination Act. If you are subject to the regulations you are owned, you think that's unique to Canada? That's the same in the U.S., that's the same everywhere. This is Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2 of the U.S. Constitution. The Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or other property belonging to the United States. If you're subject to the regulations, you are property. You're owned. I hate to wake you up to that, but that's the simple fact of the matter. That's what a slave is. A U.S. citizen is other property belonging to the United States. A U.S. citizen's a corporation. And a slave is property. Corporations shall be deemed to include any company, trust, so-called Massachusetts Trust or Association, incorporated or unincorporated, which is organized to carry on business or its own profit or that of its members, and has shares of capital or capital stock or certificate of, certificates of interest, and any company, trust, so-called Massachusetts Trust, and then it's the same definition, basically, except without shares of capital or capital stock or certificates of interest, except partnerships. But if you go back here to the definition of entity, right here, includes a limited liability company, okay? Partnership, includes a partnership, okay? And that's 31 CFR 363.6, or incompetent or a minor, okay? Remember, we talked about that. Entity means any owner of a treasury direct account that's not individual. Entity is a sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, limited liability company, a professional limited liability company, trust the estate of a decedent or the estate of a living person such as an incompetent or a minor. And so if you have not taken control of the securities contained in his or her minor account, then you're a minor, okay? Minors also used to refer to an individual who has attained the age of 18, but has not yet taken control of his securities contained in his or her minor account. And so, and that's an entity, okay? That's an entity under this part right here. So look it up. That's Title 31, Section uh, 363.6. And so um, I want nothing to do with it. Uh, the term United States business means a United States citizen, okay? U.S. citizens, a corporation. And that's found at 102 Stat 1344, Public Law 100-418, August 23, 1988. So, again, um, that's what this is, okay? A U.S. citizen is a corporation. We therefore decline to overrule the opinion of Chief Justice Marshall. We hold that the District of Columbia is not a state within Article 3 of the Constitution. In other words, cases between citizens of the district and those of the states are not included in a catalog of controversies over which the Congress could give jurisdiction to the federal courts by virtue of Article 3. Well, the federal courts don't have Article 3 jurisdiction. Okay, I hate to break that to you, but they don't have it. In other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of Washington District of Columbia, and through their plenary power, that's dictatorship, folks. 
nationally covers those citizens even when in one of the states, several states, as though the district expands for the purpose of regulating its citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the union. And that's National Mutual Insurance Company of the District of Columbia versus Tidewater Transfer Company, uh, U.S. Supreme Court, 1948. And so status, people want to change the status of their estate, okay, by taking control of that, the, the certificates, the, the securities. Well, um, status, condition, situation, pair estate. Gee, that kind of ties it together, doesn't it, folks? A corporation has no status as a citizen outside the jurisdiction where it was created. So, so again, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, anywhere. Matter of fact, I don't know if you remember Kavanaugh, the Kavanaugh hearings when uh, Kavanaugh was being appointed to the Supreme Court. And uh, and they asked him, can we go after a U.S. citizen in Afghanistan? And he said, yes, you can, because a U.S. citizen is a corporation. And the boundaries of the District of Columbia expand as necessary for any corporation. They're assaulting you with their U.S. citizen slave. A U.S. citizen is a slave. It has no rights. The only rights it has are rights that are granted by Congress. Matter of fact, there's a court case, and I don't even have it in this thing, but there's the only absolute right of a U.S. citizen is to live within the territory of boundaries of the United States, okay? Then, then if, you are, if they're assaulting you with their U.S. citizen slave, then you are in the District of Columbia, the law of status, the category of law dealing with personal and non-proprietary rights, whether in rem or in personam, is one of three departments into which civil law is divided. They are bringing the District of Columbia outside 10 miles square in violation of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. To exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district not exceeding 10 miles square, as made by session of particular states and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of government of the United States, and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the Senate shall be, which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, and dockyards, and other needful buildings. Um, that's Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. Plenary jurisdiction. That's the dictatorship, folks. A court's full and absolute power over the subject matter and the parties in the case, okay? Again, subject matter is always the issue, okay? All you have to do is, is allege, even allege, that they deny due process and they have to prove jurisdiction. And they're not even going to try. Plenary, full, complete, entire. Black's Law Dictionary, 9th edition. Plenary, full, in the courts of admiralty, in the English ecclesiastical courts, cases or suits in respect of the different course of proceedings, and each are termed plenary or summary. So that's Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 3rd revision, 8th edition, volume 2. This is Wikipedia, but it's very similar to what the Legal Information Institute, and the Legal Information Institute is Cornell Law School, and so I'm putting it here. And Cornell Law School is a very good source. Plenary. A plenary power or plenary authority is a complete and absolute power to take action on a particular issue with no limitations. It is derived from the term, Latin term, plenus. Plenary power, complete power over a particular area with no limitations. This term is often used to describe the commerce power of Congress. Under the Commerce Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, Congress has granted full power over interstate commerce. The court has found that states are not able to pass laws affecting interstate commerce without the permission of Congress. That's dictatorship, folks. This Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made or which shall be made under authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby, anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding. And that's U.S. Constitution, Article 6, Clause 2. So it doesn't matter what the state codes or Constitution says. This is the supreme law of the land. And then law of the land is a very important phrase because that's tied together with due process of law as found in the Fifth Amendment and, uh, and uh, 
So, and that's talking about common law. So law of the land and due process of law, both are the same thing, talking about common law. If you try to take control of any securities to change the status of the minor estate, you're volunteering yourself for the Commerce Clause dictatorship. Status is Roman law. At common law, status means nothing. In my opinion, it's a trap, okay? And, but you have to decide. I'm not going to tell you what you should do, and I'm not going to be your judge no matter what you do. The Bible says not to trust in the arm of flesh. Jesuits and their dupes are peddling this stuff, in my opinion, okay? But everybody has to decide what the best course of action is. This is the same thing that precipitated the War of Independence. This is causes and necessities for taking up arms by the Continental Congress in 1775. Statutes have been passed extending courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us of the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law and instead thereof to publish and order the use and exercise of the law marshal and for altering fundamentally the form of government established by charter, we saw the misery to which such despotism would reduce us. That's dictatorship, folks. That's, again, they're, they're, it's commerce. It's all about commerce. It's business. We're going to go ahead and assault you because it's all just business. Don't get me going. <laughs> <laughs> a subject is a slave. Taxation is forced work for nothing. All subjects over which the sovereign power of the state extends are objects of taxation, but those over which it does not extend are exempt from taxation. This proposition may be pronounced as self-evident. The sovereignty of the state extends to everything which exists by its authority or its permission. And that's McCullough versus Maryland. Oh, man, I must have left that out of here, didn't I? Yeah. There we go. And that's uh, 1819, U.S. Supreme Court. And actually, right here is the same case, and it's the same site, but a little bit more before it and, and some of it after. And this actually is a way better site, in my opinion. The sovereignty of a state extends to everything which exists by its own authority or is introduced by its permission. But does it extend to those means which are employed by Congress to carry into execution powers conferred on that body by the people of the United States? We think it demonstrable that it does not. Those powers are not given by the people of a single state. They are given by the people of the United States to a government whose laws made in pursuance of the Constitution are declared to be supreme. Remember, Article 6, Clause 2. Consequently, the people of a single state cannot confer a sovereignty which will extend over them. And so that's why they have to use the Commerce Clause. They cannot do anything but use the Commerce Clause. That's the only way they can do this. That's why they have to use the Commerce Clause. The sovereignty of the United States resides in the people, and Congress cannot invoke the sovereignty of the people to override their will as declared in the Constitution. A state citizen is immune from any and all government attacks and procedure absent contract. And you remember, it's got to be knowing, willing, intentional. Where's the contract here? Every man is independent of all laws except those prescribed by nature. He's not bound by any institutions formed by his fellow men without his consent. And this is a maxim of law. The power which is derived cannot be greater than that from which it is derived, okay? In other words, if there's evidence, they're going to pull up the contract. They will never, ever. You say, where's the contract? I want to see the contract here. They will never, ever, ever pull it up, okay? Because, because if they did, that would be evidence of treason, okay? That's exactly what would be going on. They will never produce a contract. And so uh, they're hoping that judge is just going to walk all over you. And, and a lot of them do. 
Uh, nor does the conclusion by any means suppose the superiority of the judicial to the legislative power. It only supposes that the power of the people is superior to both. And that's Luther versus Borden. My opinion is, and long has been, that the mayor and aldermen of a city corporation or the president directors of a bank or the president directors of a railroad company or of other similar corporations are the true parties of Sue and our suit as trustees and representatives of the constantly changing stockholders. A corporation, therefore, being not a natural person but a mere creature of the mind, invisible and intangible, cannot be a citizen of a state or of the United States, and cannot fall within the terms of the power of the above-mentioned article, and can neither plead nor be impleaded in the courts of the United States. That's U.S. Supreme Court, 1852. Obviously, the 14th Amendment made the change, and uh, it's a martial law amendment, but it, it basically made it so corporations, but again, it's why they have to assault you with their Commerce Clause. And, and But they cannot assault a man. They cannot say anything to a man because there's maxims of law about that. You're not supposed to mix. And this is U.S. courts, okay? A United States district court is not a true court established under the Constitution, Article 3, to administer the judicial power of the United States, but was created by virtue of the sovereign congressional faculty, granted under Article 4, Section 3, of making all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory belonging to the United States. Okay? So this is Puerto Rico, but it's also other property if you're a U.S. citizen. That's why they want you to pay a filing fee. Okay, because only U.S. citizens are required to pay a filing fee. So then that brings them into this Article 4, Section 3. A court can be a court of general jurisdiction for some purposes and a court of limited jurisdiction for other purposes. When, therefore, a court of general jurisdiction proceeds under a special statute, it becomes a court of limited jurisdiction for the purpose of such proceeding. And that's found in uh, Book 21 of Corpus Juris Secundum, Section 2. Uh, accordingly, where a court of general jurisdiction undertakes to carry out a special power, let's do this. A decision made in the exercise of such power is created as a ruling, is treated as a ruling of a court of limited jurisdiction, and the presumption applicable to a court of general jurisdiction that it acted within the scope of its jurisdiction does not apply. It is familiar law that when special statutory authority and derogation of common law, well, any statutory authority is in derogation of common law is conferred on courts of general jurisdiction, such a general jurisdiction becomes quad hoc, a court of inferior or limited jurisdiction. The word administrative is synonymous with the word executive. The word administrative connotes of or pertains to administration, especially management, as by managing or conducting or superintending the execution, okay, executive application or conduct or persons or things. Thus, administrative acts are those acts which are necessarily to be done to carry out legislative policies and purposes already declared by the legislative body. In fact, it is common to use the two words in tandem. So administrative equals executive branch. What is called proclaiming martial law is no law at all, but merely for the sake of public safety and circumstances of great emergency, setting aside all law and acting under military power. And that's uh, 8 Attorney General's Opinion, February 3rd, 1857. So they're imposing martial law. That's why they have to pass statutes for common law offenses. That's why all statutes are edicts under martial law. We can't even begin to count the number of times lawyers, judges, and statesmen have said there isn't any common law anymore. It's been replaced by statutes. They would be more truthful if they said there isn't any common law anymore. It's been replaced by martial law. And that's the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ellard of the Utah Supreme Court in the case Diet versus Turner. There are no common law offenses against the United States, only those acts which Congress has forbidden with penalties for disobedience of its command or crimes. Okay, so again, derogation of common law. Okay, anytime the United States is attacking you or anybody else, it's always in derogation of common law, and it's an inferior court of limited jurisdiction. And, you know, uh, these bought and paid for whores in the federal courts, 
when I started pointing out that they're an inferior court of limited jurisdiction, all of a sudden they were real nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> Under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. The legislature may create an offense and in the same enactment provide for exceptions to its application. Again, that's all in derogation of common law, which means it's an inferior court of limited jurisdiction. Under a military dictatorship, there is no law, which is why they're required to pass statutes, which are edicts for common law crimes like murder and assault. This creates civil law which creates a democracy, and under military dictatorship, you have a democracy, and a democracy is international law. So you always, always, always challenge jurisdiction. I've got a whole video on that. So I have exclusive content available on HowTube.com. The, uh, there's only one subscription level. It's $9.99 a month for videos plus unlimited email consultations. But I'm not a liar. Well, I'm an attorney. No, I'm in a liar. But I can't tell you what I would do and where to find the forms. The only power that these New World Order Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception. My agenda is to expose it for all our benefit, but I cannot fight all the battles. Some of my exclusive content is Arlington Private Information Share, Land Deed Training, Estoppel Certificates Training, Foreclosure Estoppel Certificates Training, Corporate Denial Training, Toll Roads Notice and Demand Training, Invoice Training, Notice Avoid Judgment Training, Revocation Signature Training, Third Party Witness Training, Federal Habeas Corpus Training, Revocation of Voter Registration, Criminal Complaint Training. I've got like three videos on that, and I'm probably going to do some more uh, because I've, I've changed how I do my criminal complaints, and that seems to work a little better. Lawsuit Training, i got one video on that, and I need to upload some more. Other training requests, if anybody has any requests, um, I'm willing to look at it, but it's got to be something that I haven't done already, and, uh, and it's got to be something I can do. It's got to be something related to law. So, um, yeah, uh, that's pretty well it. Um, I've also got videos on Northeast Private Information Share videos. Um, the Petition for Writ of Mandamus, that's an upcoming video. Um, I'm also going to be doing a petition for a writ of quorum nobis. Okay, that's another one. Uh, videos taken down by YouTube will also be up there in my exclusive content. They are up there. HowTube was down for a while because uh, they were doing a major upgrade, but they're back up now and fully functional. And so uh, you can, your your best selection. Some people have, have uh, uh, subscriptions off my website and, um, but the, the better selection of videos is going to be way more that are gonna be up on HowTube. There's also gonna be first views on all new uploads. All forms, files, and other instructions are available for free, linked on my videos and on my website. All exclusive content will be on HowTube, and you can buy a subscription there. And uh, it's Sovereignty International. So, um, and said Supreme Court shall divide the district into 10 sub-districts and prescribe the place in each sub-district where the justice thereof shall have his office for the transaction of business and may change the boundaries of such sub-districts and locations, the offices of justices therein from time to time, the volume as the volume of and convenience of business may require. And that's the code of law for the District of Columbia, 31 Stat 1190. All corporations, I don't know if you've noticed this, all corporations are in a zip code, all government offices are in a zip code, and the United States Postal Service is a corporation domiciled in the District of Columbia. And uh, I'm going to make a special video just about that. Should a suit be brought against any party or corporation in any district in which he or it does not reside or hold business, and a plea to the jurisdiction on this account be filed by said dependent, the party or corporation interposing such plea shall disclose under oath the district in which he or it should have been sued. And that's found in the Court of Law for the District of Columbia, 31 Stat 1190 to 1191. And in the, in the Court of Law for the District of Columbia, um, 31 Stat 1280 is entitled Corporations, and it's a huge section. There's all sorts of stuff in there on corporations. And so, again, it falls under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, to regulate commerce with foreign nations among the several states and with the Indian tribes. So when you incorporate, you incorporate into the government. Everything subject to regulations is government property. A corporation is a franchise from the government. 
My new book, Trump, A True American Patriot or Not, is now available. Uh, Mike Blackwell asked me to write the book, and it took me about six weeks because I just took a lawsuit and manipulated it and turned it into the book. Um, and so it's 99% provable facts. But um, Mike actually hired a company to help us publish it, and they wrote the back. And uh, so I'm not responsible for this, but I think they nailed it here, I'll tell you. It says, is, in Trump a true American patriot or not, Glenn Byrne and Mike Blackwell reveal the depths of corruption, deceit, and manipulation infesting our political system for hundreds of years, regardless of political affiliation. Read the hard evidence that exposes how our elected officials sold Americans into slavery. Understand the Founding Fathers' true intent when they formed our Republican form of government. Discover the influence of the satanic Roman cult on our politicians and political system. Does Donald Trump want to transfer power back to we the people? In Trump, you will see the great battle that is upon us. And I think they nailed it there. So... Uh, you can order the book from Amazon.com or from my website. It's $40 plus shipping. Um, although I've been having trouble with the brain-dead idiots at the post office uh, uh, with this shipping. So uh, hopefully I don't have to start shipping it by UPS or something. I prefer you order the book from my website, SovereigntyInternational.fyi. Amazon does not provide autographed books. If you want the book autographed, order the book from my website. So uh, you want to know the origins of the deep state and who is behind it. It's, it's again, it's 99% provable facts. Um, I use court cases, law dictionaries, uh, 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 international treaties to prove everything I say. And so uh, it's 99% it's provable facts. Uh, it goes into the history back as far as 1213. That's as far back as I have anything that's in, in, in the law. Um, do you want to know why it's called the Trump administration? Do you want to know what an administration is? Do you want to know how Trump came to be president? He was invited. Um, you know, uh, there's actually a YouTube video with uh, Jerome Corsi. I don't know if you've ever heard of Jerome Corsi. He's a guy that lives up in the Northeast. He's written a bunch of books. He's got a website and a YouTube channel. Anyways, there's a YouTube video where he says that in 2015, five generals came to see him and they said they were going to overthrow Obama. And he said, well, you can do that if you want, but you might want to go talk to Donald Trump first. Three months later, he gets a phone call. They decided not to overthrow Obama because Donald Trump had agreed to run for president. So the point is, is that Trump was invited, and there's some in the book that's my opinion, and so my opinion is that the entire Trump administration was a giant military psyop, and I think it continues to this day. Do you want to know who owns Congress? Yes, Congress is owned. Why do you think Pelosi gets up there, or did get up there, and say, we can't read this bill until after we pass it? It's because she's taken orders from somebody. You want to know why they're called law enforcement officers? Maybe it's because they're enforcing the martial law. Do you want to know how you have become a slave? Well, a slave, think about it. A slave is anybody that's forced to work for nothing. Are you paying taxes? Well, you're forced to work for nothing, for the government or for this, these thieves that are taxing. Do you want to know what the root cause of the War of Independence was? It's in the book. It's the same thing that's going on right now. Do you want to know why every president goes to visit the pimp? Well, I meant the Pope. No, I meant the pimp on their first international trip. It's in the book. <laughs> so anyways, I already told you about Mike Blackwell, and I told you about Jerome Corsi, and I told you about 95% provable facts, some opinion. Uh, Howard Hughes. Um, so in my opinion, most of these billionaires get approached by the New World Order crowd and they get told they're going to go along with their program or they're going to turn up dead. And at the time I wrote the book, I wrote it, I published it, I wrote it in January of 2019 and it took us till August to get it published. 
And uh, at that time, I uh, thought that uh, Howard Hughes, like Donald Trump, actually, had both been approached and get told that you're going to go along with our program or you're going to turn up dead. And Howard Hughes, that's why Howard Hughes was hiding out all the time. But I've since learned a few things more, and that's why we're going to talk about David Wilcock here in a minute. But as far as Trump is concerned, I think he was approached, too. And um, again, I have no proof, except that there was a helicopter crash in 1984, and it crashed for a reason that I've never, ever, ever heard of a helicopter crash. And I have seen, I've, I, I started out working on helicopters in 1976, okay? So I know something about helicopters. And I can tell you that they crashed for a lot of reasons. I've seen some crashed helicopters, and um, they crashed for a lot of reasons. But I have never heard of a helicopter crashing because the blades came off. Matter of fact, those blades are life limited, not the blades. Actually, the blades are, but the, the bolts that hold those blades are life limited. And so I think there was sabotage because that helicopter had three of Trump's executives on it, and he was supposed to have been on that flight and canceled out at the last minute. And so... Um, um, there was three of executives on there, and they were all killed. And so um, I think that Trump knows exactly what the threats are. And um, so, anyways, that's my opinion. Uh, David Wilcock, actually, there's a he's got a website and a and a YouTube channel called Divine Cosmos, and he says that in twenty in in actually after World War II. Howard Hughes got blackballed, and he couldn't get any defense contracts. And we all know that he was a big defense contractor during World War II. He built that Spruce Goose, and that thing's still sitting in the Long Beach Harbor even to this day. Anyways, um, so what David Wilcox says is that Howard Hughes went and hired some young ladies to go and sleep with, uh, with the military-industrial complex types to find out how come he couldn't get any defense contracts? And that's when he found out that they had blackballed him. Um, and so he and and that they were planning on killing off a bunch of us with their with their pandemics and their wars and everything. And so he um, he uh, uh, had a manual and procedure manual and instructions on how to defeat the whole thing. And Kennedy was implementing it. Kennedy, remember, Kennedy circulated $6 billion worth of U.S. Treasury notes. That's like telling the bankster thieves, you're done. And so, um, so they killed Kennedy, they killed his brother, they killed a whole bunch of people. And uh, so I think that um, that's why Howard Hughes was hiding out, because he figured he was on the list. And um, so, you know, I, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Howard Hughes, I think, was a true patriot, and he felt terribly alone, and it's pretty sad. It's a good thing he had the resources to be able to protect himself, because otherwise he could have wound up like, uh, you know, Malcolm X and all the rest of the ones that got killed around them. In reality, they're not after me. They're after you. I'm just in the way. Well, if that's the case, thank you, Donald Trump. A lot of people say that Donald Trump is controlled opposition. I don't know if he is or not. I hope he's not. But either way, if we the people get off our backside and start taking care of business and form our militias and do everything that's that we should be doing, then it doesn't matter who's president because we the people are in control. That's who's really in control. And the only reason they've been able to do the stuff they're doing is because we're asleep at the wheel. And uh, But I got to say that we're waking up in droves right now, and that's good. And I hope people wake up with this video, too. So, um, anyways, this is all stuff that was going on that precipitated the War of Independence. And this is actually taken from the Declaration of Independence. At the very end, we're going to talk about the preamble to the Declaration of Independence. But, but really, the Declaration of Independence is a list of grievances, if you think about it. And these are some of the grievances. These aren't all of them. Uh, these are some of the grievances that are listed in the uh, Declaration of Independence. And uh, what I did is I put in square brackets, uh, comparable, current comparables, okay? So he has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for, the, for that purpose, obstructing the laws of naturalization of foreigners and refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither. Well, gee, that sounds like 
open borders and election interference, which is what's happening today, and raising the conditions of new appropriations of land. He's obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. Well, obviously, he didn't want any real courts. You know, he wanted kangaroo courts, okay? That's exactly, he wanted judges that were uh, uh, going to do what he told them to do. Matter of fact, there was some things in the Constitution that are there because of that fact. Uh, anyways, he's erected a multitude of new offices and sent here their swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out our substance. Well, damn, that's happening today. I mean, there's like military police everywhere, code enforcers, there's all these bureaucrats running around with their hands out. He's affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. Well, that's martial law and that's happening today. He's combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our Constitution, unacknowledged by our laws. Gee, that sounds like martial law. Giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation, and that's color of law. And that's everything they do as they assault us with this color of law. A good example is a KPS. A KPS is not a warrant. These pigs call it a warrant, but it's not. There's court cases to say it's not for protecting them by a mock trial. Well, gee, that sounds like kangaroo courts and show trials and denials of due process. If there's anywhere that you'll get your rights violated, it's in the so-called courts. From punishment from any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states, and we've seen that happen, okay? People that, uh, that get a slap on the wrist when they should get something a lot more serious, or, or they get sold into slavery forever because they're not politically correct. For transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses, offenses well, that's color of law, and that sounds like uh, bringing color of law outside not exceeding 10 miles square. For abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province and establishing therein an arbitrary government, arbitrary meaning dictatorship, and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. Absolute rule is dictatorship. Bringing District of Columbia dictatorship outside not exceeding 10 miles square. For imposing taxes on us without our consent. That's martial law. Matter of fact, if you read the Libra Code, it says, you know, that the, the martial law affects mostly the police for the collection of revenue. For taking away our charters, abolishing the most valuable laws, altering fundamentally the forms of our governments. Gee, that's military dictatorship. For suspending our own legislatures, declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. That's more dictatorship. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. Well, that's martial law, military dictatorship under the Trading with the Enemy Act. So you're the enemy. Wake up, folks. He's destroyed the lives of our people while populating the jails with commercial transactions. Texas has a bigger percentage of people in jail than the worst communist dictatorships, more than China, more than the Soviet Union. Don't get me going. You're going to get me going here. Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution says the United States shall guarantee to every state of this union a Republican form of government. And the second Article 2, an amendment says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Well, we all know how busy they are trying to take away the arms. So uh, check out my other videos, Bankster Thieves Playlist, Roman Cult Playlist, Bankrupt so Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 through 8, Do It Yourself How Not to Volunteer for the Selective Service in the Draft, Martial Laws Here, Do It Yourself No Income Tax, Do It Yourself Free Mail uh, 1 to 2, Do It Yourself Kangaroo Courts 1 through 28. Canada Border Pigs Playlist, Bar Members and Their Satanic Connections Playlist. Resistance to Tyrants is Obedience to God. Sad will be the day when the American people forget their traditions and their history and no longer remember that the country they love, the institutions they cherish, and the freedom they hope to preserve were born from the throes of an armed resistance to tyranny and nursed in the rugged arms of fearless men. Well said. 
Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. Therefore, non-resistance to tyrants is obedience to Satan. So who, who are you going to serve? Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. Don't forget to like this video on YouTube. Don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when there's a new upload. On Steemit, don't forget to vote and make your comments. This is the front page of the channel. Uh, the uh, subscribe button's already been clicked, otherwise it'll be red. And the bell, when it does get clicked, the arrow's pointing at the bell, it'll look like it's vibrating. So they've been telling uh, that people for decades that were in a democracy. Well, Congress created the military dictatorship, which is a democracy. Do you think it's an accident? Anybody who calls it a democracy is really engaged in treason because it's a republic. Give me liberty or give me death by Patrick Henry after witnessing a man flogged to death for refusing to take a license. A license is a contract. And so, so um, that's the, 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 the communists from England. Okay, and now we're full of them all over here. Um, we're basically uh, wanting to do commerce, okay? They're bringing the commerce clause. We want to do business, and if you don't do business with me, we'll just kill you. The corrupt Star Chamber Courts of England required defendants to have counsel. Star Chamber stood for swiftness and arbitrary power as a limitation on the common law. So if they're assaulting you with one of their bar scum, then uh, then you're in an inferior court of limited jurisdiction and uh, in derogation of common law, and you're in the District of Columbia. They're assaulting you with their bar member, buddy. Although the right to self-representation is not a license to abuse the dignity of the courtroom, neither is it a license for the court to impose upon the defendant its own choice of counsel. The defendant's Sixth Amendment right to choose counsel or to proceed pro se is the essential part of his right to a fair trial. And that's, again, the same case, Ferretta versus California. Whereas taxation by the Parliament of Great Britain for the purpose of raising a revenue in His Majesty's colonies, provinces, and plantations in North America, in the tyrants' pro colonies and pro uh, provinces and plantations in North America, has been found by experience to occasion great uneasiness and disorders that from and after the passing of this act, the King and Parliament of Great Britain will not impose any duty, tax, or assessment, whatever, payable in the, any of the colonies, provinces, or plantations in North America or the West Indies, except only such duties that may be expedient to a regulation of, to impose for the regulation of commerce. Well, they were assaulting everybody with their commerce before, and so they're just trying to they want it to look good in history, the, the cowards, the tyrant. Taxes cause the war of independence. If they can tax you, then you are their slave. You're forced to work for them from nothing. It's becoming more and more difficult to be free. There's two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by sword and the other is by debt. When acting to enforce a statute and subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge in municipal court is acting as an administrative officer and not in a judicial capacity. For the executive agency, courts administrating or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but merely acts as extension as an agent involved for the agency. It's only a ministerial. They're bought and paid for. It's the accepted rule, not only the state courts, but of the federal courts as well, that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they're described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes as a bought and paid for clerk. Judges have become involved in enforcement of mere statutes, civil or criminal in nature, and otherwise act as mere clerks of the involved agency. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. Where there is no jurisdiction, there is no judge. The proceeding is as nothing such as been the law from the days of Marshal Saya. So the judge wears a military uniform in their inferior court of limited jurisdiction. The judge sits there and plays stupid. If you fail to follow some obscure rule or procedure, they sell you into slavery. Everything they do is a fraud and a nullity. They're Satanists. They're Baal priests. They're communists. 
Judge works for the state. Prosecutor works for the state. Police or witness works for the state. The vast majority of the disputes that the police initiate on behalf of their employer are also adjudicated by their employer where the plaintiff, the judge, the antagonist, the police, the only witness... Also, the police all represent the same party, and since no corpus delecti, mens reus or ex reus can be produced, doesn't technically qualify to be heard according to its own laws. The state, therefore, is indistinguishable from a criminal cartel. It's District of Columbia. There's District of Columbia right there. You're being assaulted with the District of Columbia. Commerce Clause, it's all business. But in fact, men laws of statutes are intended to be applied against those who are here as residents in the state under the Interstate Commerce Clause of the Federal Constitution and the so-called 14th Amendment. And that's United States versus United Marn Workers, 1947. Copies of these documents can be found um, on my website and linked under my recent YouTube videos for a complete set of YouTube videos with private information shares, a DVD with over 100 searchable law dictionaries and other books and forums. Contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the IOUs, the Federal Reserve notes, the forced loans, the securities. I guess we'll take that IOUs. That's a little bit redundant there, isn't it? Cash app, gifts, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. They're selling you into slavery. This is the current so-called 13th Amendment. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, where the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. He, the prisoner, has as a consequence of his crime not only forfeited his liberty, but all his personal rights, except those which the law and its humanity affords him. He is, for the time being, a slave of the state. They're selling you into slavery. It's time to wake up, folks. This is warfare. You're being assaulted. Everybody is being assaulted with that minor estate. You're incompetent. They're assaulting you with their bar member scum, and they're going to sell you into slavery. They're a bunch of thieves and pirates. So I'm not saying, I am I am saying that I would not change the status, but I am definitely going to build a case against them and sue their fucking ass off. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren or the children of Israel, or maketh merchandise of him, or selleth him, then that thief shall die. Thou shalt put evil away from among you. And that's at the end of the day what has to happen. Think about it, folks. You know, at the end of the day, Remember, remember the very beginning. I said, never forget the men who started this country were marijuana growing, whiskey drinking, tax evading rebels who let their beds at night to shoot at the pigs. Well, you know, think about it. We're going to have to start forming our own militia and we're going to have to go out and engage them is what's going to happen. That's the only way that we're really going to put a stop to this stuff because it's going to keep going. We can have a benevolent dictator, a tyrant dictator. Obama was a textbook tyrant. Pelosi gets up and tells the House, we can't read this bill until after we prove it. That's a tyrant. Lindsey Williams is a Southern Baptist preacher that went to the Alaska oil pipeline in the 60s. And, uh, and they liked what he was doing. And so they gave him a room to stay in their camp and uh, invited him to their corporate meetings. And uh, he got to know those people, and uh, and then for the last 30 years, he's been uh, uh, publishing a couple times a year uh, a video talking about what they were telling them they were going to do, and um, and and then they would go ahead and and you'd see it happening, the stuff that he said they were planning on doing, and when Trump ran and won, the elite told Lindsey Williams that God had intervened. So, um, you know, a lot of people don't like Trump. And my attitude is, is that they hate his guts. And so to me, that means he's got to be okay in my book, you know, because they hate his guts so bad just because of that fact. You know, I think it's, I think it says a lot for the guy. Um, anyways, that's my opinion. We the people are the rightful masters of both Congress and the courts, not to overthrow the Constitution, but to overthrow the men who would pervert the Constitution. 
Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. It's time to get unplugged, folks. It's time to get unplugged. Get unplugged. You ever watch that those John Wick movies where John Wick will sit there and he'll pay for everything with a gold coin. And then he'll go in somewhere and he'll be killing them and, and, and it'll be fist fights or it'll be pulling a gun out and just killing them left, right, and center. And um, what will happen is, matter of fact, there's one scene where where him and this guy are, are beating the shit out of each other and, and they break through this door into this foyer in this in this uh, in this hotel, and the proprietor of the hotel comes down the stairs and says, "Gentlemen, gentlemen, you're you're not supposed to be conducting business in on company property," and and so and they both stop and they both kind of brush themselves off and 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 dust themselves off and 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 he says, "Gentlemen, I suggest maybe you want to go to the bar and have a drink." <laughs> So they both go to the bar and have a drink. They're not supposed to be conducting business in that location. <laughs> and the business is killing each other. And so, so, you know, that's what it might come down to. Think about it, folks. Think about it. America needs God. Rebellions to tyrants is obedience to God. And it's time we started waking up. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, Exodus 20 and 3. The new world order will require you worship government, okay? This is going on in China right now because the fallen, with the fallen gong and they're doing their organ harvesting programs because they refuse to worship government. And so that's coming here, folks, if we allow it, okay? We have to allow it. We are armed. And so we need to put a stop to it. It's got to stop here. The whole world is looking at us to see what we are going to do. And we need to step up. Tyranny. This is, this is according to John Locke. Two treatises of government, book two. This is what the founding fathers were reading. Okay, folks? This is what the founding fathers were reading. Tyranny is the exercise of power beyond right which nobody can have a right to. And this is making use of the power anyone has in his hands, not for the good of those who are under it, but to his own private separate advantage. When the governor, however entitled, makes not the law, but his will, the rule, and his commands and actions are not directed to the preservation of the properties of his people, but to the satisfaction of his own ambition, revenge, covetousness, or any other irregular passion. "'Tis a mistake to think this fault only in monarchies. Other forms of government are liable to it as well as that. For wherever the power that is put in any hands for the government of the people and the preservation of their properties is applied to other ends and made use of to impoverish, harass, or subdue them to the arbitrary and irregular commands of those who have it, there it presently becomes tyranny, whether those that have it use it are one or many. And so this is what the founding fathers were reading. This is why they revolted against the tyrant. And we need to understand that. And we have tyranny happening today. It's all over the place. And it's because we, the people, have been asleep at the wheel. This is the Declaration of Independence. This is the preamble. It's not all of the preamble, but it's the beginning of the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government, governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations like what's happening today, folks, 
pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, District of Columbia dictatorship. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government. So, anyways, that's the gospel according to me and the Founding Fathers. You have to decide whether you want to change the status of the minor estate. You're going to have to do something about it for sure, okay? They're going to keep assaulting you with it no matter what you do. You're going to have to do something about it. You can uh, change the status or you can, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sue them. And, and I, want the, I want the thing dissolved and liquidated. And I don't really care what happens to the fake money that's in it, okay? Um, my attitude is is that I'm not supposed to rely on the arm of flesh and that, that God will provide one way or the other. And so far, he's, you know, I'm surviving. I'm not surviving as well as I would like to, uh, but, but I'm surviving. And so, um, you know, it's whatever God has in mind for me is my attitude. I think I was born for this, and and this is I'm definitely on in my destiny right now. And so, um, and I suppose that's all that really matters if I'm doing what God wants me to do. And so, um, and we all have to decide that. I am not going to be a judge of anybody that does change the status of their minor estate. Uh, I wouldn't. I would never do that. It's all satanic. These people are Satanists. They're diabolically evil. And we, the people, if there was Christians in this country, they'd get their necks stretched, okay? And that's what needs to happen. And that's what needs to happen. You know, these bar members, these bar member scum that are everywhere, don't get me going. You're going to get me going. Anyways, I wish you a wonderful Christmas. This is actually going to be published after Christmas, and I'm on Christmas Eve right now, so it's going to get published after Christmas. So I hope you had a nice Christmas, and I hope you have a really good New Year. And... Um, and uh, I hope you continue to watch my videos. I kind of get going, and so, uh, uh, but uh, it's it's because I see a lot of tyrants. I see a lot of tyranny, and um, I want to break it off in their ass. And I'm certainly going to do the best I can, and I think that the time is going to come when I'll really be able to break it off in their ass. But so when God decides that it's time, then that's when it'll be time. And I'm just kind of like a pawn in a big game of chess. Anyways, thanks for watching and have a great day.